Okay. I, I think it's a, it's a small set of people, but perhaps we can, we can still have um, a useful short discussion. Um, I think the, the, the first thing we wanted to talk about was um, with regards to the, uh, the storage white paper that we did, I think we can. We we were we wanted to draw a line under it and say it's done because um, we haven't had any uh, any major uh, comments for a few weeks and we had presented it at the um, at KubeCon in Seattle and as well as in Shanghai and I think we're we're now in a place where where we think it's done and we're happy with it. So I was going to propose putting this um, onto the. Uh, onto the storage working group GitHub um, so that it's recorded there. And I'll speak to uh, Chris Anacek and, um, and get them to, to maybe do a little bit of uh, marketing and beautifying on it. I, I think the, server, the serverless working group, when they put their white paper together, I think the, the CNCF sort of um, put a bit of, of branding around it and, and did some marketing and PR and things like that. And, and, and maybe that would be that would be a useful next step there. Oh, hi, Quinton. Hello. Sorry, I'm late. No problem. Um, we were just saying that, that we were going to put the, the storage white paper onto the GitHub page and ask the CNCF to, to, um, to, uh, to do some marketing and, and sort of publicize it officially um, and then in terms of of the next steps um, the the what we had discussed when we were uh, um, in the sessions in Shanghai and Seattle is that we were going to look at uh, options to discuss real life use cases preferably from from end users um, so that we can uh, we can put together um, some more useful Patterns in terms of how people consume storage with some with some real life uh, with some real life examples, and I wanted to pull the audience to kind of see if there were any strong preferences on on the next items to do, sort of which patterns or which use cases to 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 look at. Um, bearing in mind that the that the white paper covered um, a large variety of options covering sort of the, the different types of um, volumes, uh, covering sort of block devices and file systems, et cetera, as well as um, the API-driven methods of accessing storage. So, so things like key value stores and, and, and object stores, as well as databases, um, which we could, which we could, uh, which, so, so there's, there's a huge variety of things we could, we could cover. Um, and I was wondering if, what, what your thoughts were. So I'll kind of open it up to the call. Hey, Alex, I was wondering, uh, should we put together some kind of survey and ask a user questions just based on the white paper? Like what type of storage are they using and what's the reason they choose those? Um, That's a good idea. Yeah. When I think the key is how do you get the list because if we send it out to just the members who show up here, that's a pretty selective audience. What we want is maybe even including somehow people who don't know this group exists, if there's a list we can get. So, so what, what I was going to suggest is um, I, could, I was going to suggest speaking to um, Cheryl Hung, who, 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 who runs the... Um, the CNCF uh, ecosystem. She's the director of ecosystem for the CNCF, but she runs the end user um, forum um, where the CNCF end user uh, members um, sort of live. Um, and I was wondering if you know she could either submit a survey to them to ask what they want, or or perhaps we could get um, a slot in in their in one of their next meetings where where perhaps we could join for five ten minutes and kind of ask the panel and have a bit of a discussion as to what the end users actually want to see. That sounds like a great idea. Right, so I'll, I'll take an action to reach out to Cheryl. Yeah, I think broadly speaking, we have uh, the end user 
bunch of people and the contributors, and there's obviously some amount of overlap between the two groups, but um, we can probably reach out to them somewhat separately from each other. You know, the end users tend to hang out in some places and the contributors hang out in other places. And I think both of the inputs are probably valuable, um, but we need to just make sure we understand whose input we're reading when we read the input, because <laughs> uh, they're quite distinct groups. Uh, good point, actually. We, uh, I think the list of contributors, there is, a, there is a mailing list and there's a list of contacts in GitHub for that. So if we agree the question that we're going to ask, we can, we can send it to, to both sides in parallel. Yeah, and there's, there's actually another working group that I am involved with, um, the long-term support guys, and they, they just put such a questionnaire together. Um, and as much as the subject matter is quite different, um, you know, just the structure of, of such a questionnaire and, you know, there are a bunch of introductory questions that kind of all questionnaires need to have. Who are you? Do you consider yourself an end user or contributor? Uh, how big are your clusters? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so we could perhaps take that as a, as a starting point and, and, you know, replace the long-term support specific questions with storage specific questions, but there's a fair amount of that that we could reuse. Ah, oh, that's really useful. How, how can we get hold of that questionnaire? Uh, Tim Pepper is the main guy. Uh, I can send you the link uh, and, and Tim okay. Pepper will the details. Okay. Um, Right. So, so, I mean, that, that, that sounds like a good thing. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's on the end user side of things. If, 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 you know, a few of us can join the end user regular monthly meeting uh, that they have for, for maybe a, a 10 minute slot or something, you know, we can have actually have a little bit of a discussion and, and get some sort of uh, oral feedback as well, uh, because not all of those guys will have the time and the patience to put it to fill in a questionnaire. Yeah, totally agreed. One, one other brief point on the topic of questionnaires and version two of the paper. We, we have a kind of a logical, uh, I wouldn't call it a deadline, but a, a potentially logical endpoint, which is KubeCon Europe, uh, which is mid-May, I seem to recall. Um, so we, we should probably figure out what we're gonna have done by mid-May. Um, you know, that could range from getting all the input from the from the questionnaire and producing the second version of the white paper based on that input and presenting it at KubeCon Europe or just the former <laughs> uh, or, or any, you know, various permutations of that. But it, it's probably a good idea to decide now what exactly our goals are for KubeCon Europe in May. Yes. Yeah, well, I believe if you're going to put on sessions and they allow, you know, one or one or two, that the deadline is coming up in a week or so. That's right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to send those in anyway. I, in fact, drafted them and nearly sent them in this week, but, uh, but they're fairly generic. It's like, you know, we're the working group. We'll tell you what we've been doing and we'll give you an update on yada, yada. And, uh, and closer to the time we can, you know, reword that based on what we actually decide to present. Uh, so that's less of a problem. I think what's more, more pressing from our point of view is is actually having a clear goal that we set you know, in the next week to say, this is what we want to have done by that date and work backwards from there because that usually means that we need to have the questionnaire published by date X and we need to present to the end user group on date Y and uh, we need to have a draft of the paper on date Z, whatever it is. Um, and, and I think you'll find out that we don't have like, that much time. <laughs> uh, whereas if we don't decide those things now, uh, we probably won't have anything ready for May if, if we're not careful. Yes, that is that is a very good point. Um, I, my preference, and I'd love to hear everybody's feedback on this, is not to do um, a white paper style document. Um, uh, as a second phase, but to do, to focus on use cases and, and sort of end user patterns for, for where they use storage in cloud native environments and kind of keep it to um, a relatively uh, 
a relatively straightforward short thing, which is maybe a, a couple of pages long, um, plus maybe some some sort of examples and, and YAML files and things like that, which which we can include in um, in GitHub as well, and 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 maybe if we draw up like a simple template to follow we can collect the same information for, this, for a number of different use cases and it won't be such a such an onerous task to put the content together perhaps yeah i think that sounds reasonable uh, something else to bear in mind is that the CN so, so a couple of things to bear in mind one is that the cncf elections are going on right now um and so i may or may not be on the toc uh, next time around who knows um, in which case my role in this group is maybe, you know, I could continue or not, but currently I'm here as, a, as the TOC representative. If I'm not on the TOC, that wouldn't make sense. Um, so we should sort of plan uh, as if I may or may not be here. Um, secondly, um, the TOC is uh, in the process of, and Alex knows about this, uh, about formalizing a, a SIG structure and there will almost definitely be a SIG storage for the CNCF and broadly speaking its responsibilities will be you know looking after the health of all storage related projects in the CNCF as well as identifying gaps in our storage portfolio and you know finding additional CNCF storage projects etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so that's going to be you know a significant amount of work for somebody uh, I would imagine that either this group will expand to become a SIG, um, or at the very least, some of the people on this group will, you know, serve in the new SIG storage. Um, either way, we will, you know, have some amount of work bandwidth removed from the, <laughs> this group in in the next uh, short while. So just yeah, for a lot of month. Yeah. So so that's a very good point, and and, and that was partly my sort of reasoning for, for keeping the contents to be um, s smaller blocks that, that we can do uh, a bit more autonomously because I think one of the things as part of the evolution of the SIG will be um, that we'll probably need to put some focus into um, both soliciting uh, information from, from different projects and, and potentially we might be given tasks from the TOC to, to actually review potential projects, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, we, we need to we need to factor that into. Mm. And I must say, if, if I were to have to make a choice between um, making significant progress towards a, a storage SIG uh, by May, by uh, by SIG I mean you know a, a group that looks after all the storage related stuff in the CNCF uh, and publishing a second paper of some sort um, along the lines of what you described, I would say the former is more important probably than the latter uh, you know nobody's been screaming for this second paper uh we thought it was a good idea but i think if it didn't produce it by may it would probably be fine i think if we didn't make any progress towards a storage sig by may that would be less fine okay uh, i think that's good guidance how about how about this if if we put together um a little bit of a uh, if we put together a survey or a questionnaire and, and maybe attend the end user sessions as, as our next steps. At least we can get sort of, you know, both quantitative and qualitative data as to what the end users are interested in. And that should also be, you know, that, that's a useful data point for, for a content point of view, but it's also a very useful data point on what um, maybe we can shape the priorities of the, of the upcoming SIG on, i.e. the type of projects we look at first and those kind of things. Absolutely, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Right. Okay, so, so, so that sounds like that. In terms of, in terms of action points then, um, uh, Quinton, you'll, you'll forward on the link to that questionnaire. Um, we probably need somebody to reshape that questionnaire into more of a storage type thing. Um, and then, so, so somebody needs to take that action on if possible. Um, I'm happy to take on the action to to work with Cheryl to get um, a session with the with the end users and maybe plan out that agenda and put a couple of slides together to to facilitate the discussion. Um, is there anybody who wants to help with the questionnaire or with the survey? I can help with that. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Jane.
Okay. Um, I think those were the main points. I think those were the main points we had. I'll, I can take the action to put the, to raise the PR to get the and convert the doc into a markup for GitHub. Um, and I'll speak to I'll speak to Chris um, and Shek in terms of sort of getting the publicity put together. Um, was there anything else, uh, any other business or any other things that we wanted to discuss? Overwhelming silence. Yeah, nothing for me. Was there, Quentin, was there anything else from, from your point of view? No, I think we've done well. Uh, yeah, if we can get if we can get what we discussed today moving forward in the next few weeks, I think that'll be great. Good stuff. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.